the U.S. wants with Taiwan and why did Nancy Pelosi visit when she did? Well, you know, that's a that's an interesting story because, you know, it should be better known that under the Carter administration in 1978, the United States government recognized the People's Republic of China as the representative of the Chinese people, uh, leaving to some extent ambiguity around Taiwan. By the way, Taiwan has a population of 22 million. It's not an enormous compared to 1.4 billion in the PRC. Uh, but that should not be a measure of anything. I don't mean, therefore, they should be absorbed. OK, I didn't mean to say that. But it's it's only 22 million. Um, now, interestingly, right after that 1978 um, you know, decision by the United States government, the US passed the Taiwan Relations Act, which allowed the US to maintain this kind of ambiguity of having an office in Taiwan and then doing arms sales to Taiwan, but then not really you know, uh, making a show of it, but then doing it and, you know, inviting. And by the way, until 1987, Taiwan was essentially a one party dictatorship. So it wasn't like democracy versus authoritarianism or anything. OK, people don't know that from 1949 to 1987, Taiwan was governed by an iron fist. And that iron fist was the Kuomintang. Um, in 1987, there was a kind of democratization, but the Kuomintang continued to governed for another 10 years, uh, ruthless, you know, against opposition and so on. Um, so the United States cuts this deal with Taiwan anyway, after recognizing China as the most significant, you know, as the representative by saying, we'll sell you arms. We'll... So they've used Taiwan in a way as an irritant against um, against China. This has got nothing to do with the Taiwanese people. OK, Nancy Pelosi did not show up in Taipei to basically stand in solidarity with the Taiwanese people. She went to Taipei to just provoke the Chinese government, you know, to see what they would do. Well, the Chinese government, they always think in 5,000, 10,000 year increment, <laughs> right. not like in two week, one day increment. They are thinking eventually Taiwan is going to fall. You know, the government will wrap up and it will basically Taiwan's entire economy is dependent on China. You know, you, you, you may not know this, but about 20 years ago, Rania, there was a political party formed in Taiwan called the 51st state. They wanted to actually join the United States as the 51st state. Oh, why would you want to do party. that? Well, oh. you know, it's interesting. What interested me was actually, imagine, just imagine, just for as a mental exercise, if Xi Jinping decided that, you know, he contacted some government official in Hawaii or Guam, forget Hawaii, uh, Hawaii is too far away, but somebody in Guam, and he decided, I'm going to fly to visit Guam. How would the U.S. <laughs> react to that? And Guam is horribly. A, yeah, Guam is an occupied zone. It's 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 occupied by the U.S. military. The indigenous people of Guam are second class citizens. Imagine if Xi Jinping did that. I mean, that's how the Chinese see it. This was a right. deliberate act of provocation. If the U.S. is actually interested in the human rights and so on of Taiwan, then the question should be asked of the U.S. government between you know, at least 1949 and 1987, not once did you squeak about democratic rights and human rights and so on of the Taiwanese people. You're quite happy with the iron fist of the Kuomintang. It's the same with Hong Kong. You know, when Britain ruled Hong Kong, there were no rights for the people of Hong Kong. You never squeaked once about the human rights of the Hong Kong people. Now they use Hong Kong and Taiwan as a kind of pin to poke the Chinese. Now, exactly. There may be real issues involved in Taiwan and in Hong Kong and so on, but this is not what motivates the United States. Never. It's never what motivates the United States.